Another difference between two models when starting the drone is that now uh, you don't need to synchronize uh, your remote control with the E520S, while for E58 you still need to synchronize it manually. So I'm turning on the remote control and I do this movement. And you see now the flash is not blinking, uh, you can start the drone. It's synchronized. And then you need to do the factory gyroscope calibration. This operation is the same for E520S. And then the drone will be flying more or less in a stable way. Let's turn the, on the engines and fly it up. So you see it's more or less stable. Now imagine you don't have a GPS signal. The manual calibration would help here a lot. So I can stabilize it. You see the drone is lifting and I will stabilize it. But what would happen if you don't have a manual calibration on a drone that has on the GPS uh, control? Now I turn on the E520S drone and uh, I have its remote control here. When I turn it on, it's uh, synchronized with the drone automatically. I don't need to do any movement with the stick. Now let's do the gyroscope calibration. The same. And now, uh, according to the instructions, you need to do the compass calibration, but I want to show you how you can fly without the compass calibration. You see the drone is more stable, it's very big and without GPS signal it's still more or less stable. You can still feel some kind of a hesitation, but it's because I didn't do the compass calibration. You can feel kind of a hesitation. And in order to avoid this kind of uh, hesitation in the air, you can feel that the drone goes like this a little bit. Uh, you should do the compass calibration and to do that you need to push this button which is a navigation button on the remote and now you see the lights start blinking you need to do it according to the instructions in counterwise direction until the back lights stop flashing and you hear the beeping signal from the remote control and the back lights are not flashing now now you need to turn this drone like this and turn it in the clockwise direction like this and the lights, the front lights now are blinking and they should stop blinking when it's done and you see they stop blinking now the drone should fly even in the most stable manner let's check it out so we did the gyroscope factory calibration and the compass calibration and we don't have any GPS signal. The fact that the back lights are flashing tells us that there's no uh, GPS signal because we are inside. So now I'm not doing anything and the drone is pretty stable. As you can see the drone is pretty stable, it's very different from the way E58 flies. It's now much more easy to, it's now much easier to control the drone. Even if it drifts a little bit, as it doesn't have any GPS signal, it's still okay. I have already hit the drone into walls as you can see so I decided to put these protectors because this drone is uh, heavier than the E58 and it makes a lot of difference when it uh, hits the, wall, the walls and the propellers are much uh, stronger now I already damaged them there is a cut on one of them and some of them got a little bit bent but as you can see it still, still flies well but as this drone is very big I don't recommend to risk a lot with this because bumping into wall with this drone is much more energy than with E58 so 
it may get a stronger impact but for now so far it's been good and as the propellers are huge here like bigger than on E58 I still prefer to have these protectors we'll see in real life how these protectors will behave because for E58 these protectors just fell off also these parts fell off we'll see how this drone works so uh, in the next videos we'll see how this drone works with GPS signal and how we can use the app and the smartphone to connect to the drone